Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. So we got multiple stories to go over today, including uh, the incoming Secretary of Defense, Pete Hegseth. He responded to wokeness in the military, and I'm going to show you what he had to say that has the left going nuts. Also, we're going to look at the very fishy apology coming from Rachel Zegler. This is the Disney actress in the new Snow White movie that still hasn't come out yet. But I want to show you her very fishy apology after wishing harm on everybody that voted for Trump. A massive update on the FEMA scandal where FEMA was skipping houses that had Trump signs out in their front yards. And something that just happened to Taylor Swift that has the left, well, losing their minds. Hey, real quick, would you consider hitting that thumbs up button? You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. First, let's take a look at this. Not for long, incoming Trump Secretary of Defense, Pete Hegseth, takes aim at Air Force Academy wokeness. You know, it's about time that we start taking aim at the wokeness in our military. You know, they've lowered the standards for you know, joining the military so that they can implement all this woke DEI insane just garbage into our military. Senator Mike Lee said, I recently spoke with the father of a U.S. Air Force Academy cadet. He told me that the Air Force Academy official forms refer to him, the cadet's father, as the cadet's non-birthing parent and to his wife, the cadet's mother, as the cadet's non-birthing parent. Wait, what? And this is mild, by the way. This is how insane our military has gotten. They've prioritized diversity, equity, and inclusion. They've prioritized the feelings of all these extreme leftists who need to be coddled and who need to have the literal, the, the standards, the physical, mental, emotional standards of the military lowered so that they can be a part of the military and do what? This was Hegseth's response to what Mike Lee said. He said, not for long. You gotta love this. If he is the Secretary of Defense, he's going to put a stop to this insane wokeness that is overtaking our military, making America less safe, and it's it just, it's all in the name. You know, this is a religion, by the way. No, make no mistake about this. These people worship at the altar of wokeness. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that in John 14, 6. Look at mainstream media losing their minds over this. Martha, so great to see you. Let's go ahead and start with Pete Hegseth. He's a Fox News host nominated by Trump to lead the Department of Defense. You've covered the Pentagon for many years through many wars. How could Hegseth change the DOD? Well, Gio, he could really change it dramatically. He says throughout his book and in public that the senior leadership at the Pentagon generals should be fired because they are, quote, woke. He believes the Pentagon has gone too far <laughs> with diversity and inclusion training. And yes. he's made quite clear he does not think women should be in combat. Women, of course, have been approved for ground combat positions for a decade. They are in those positions now. They are doing the work. They are excelling. But whether he would try to make those changes or not, it would be cultural shock and awe there. It would be cultural shock and awe to return the military back to just focusing on protecting America, being the strongest military in the world, and getting rid of all the identity politics within the military. <laughs> Look how the lamestream media tries to twist everything to make it sound like, you can't do this. You'll hurt people's feelings. You know, we need to get back to hurting people's feelings by telling the truth. Uh, <laughs> the truth can do that to you, but it's also the best thing in the world. Uh, for you to hear. In fact, here's Hegseth's response to wokeness in the military. This was on a very popular podcast. There's a chance to course correct it, but uh, it would take the new, a new Trump administration going after it really hard. How would they correct it? Well, first of all, you got to fire. Um, you know, you got to fire the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and you got to fire this. I mean, obviously, you're going to bring in a new Secretary of Defense, but any general that was involved, general, admiral, whatever that was involved in any of the DEI woke, it's got to go. 
Uh, either you're in for war fighting, that, and that's it. And that's the only litmus test we care about. Uh, you got to get DEI and CRT out of military academies so you're not training young officers to yep. be baptized in this type of thinking. You know, Hexeth is right. Uh, the military's turned into identity politics. It's turned into DEI. It's turned into uh, catering and coddling the feelings of all these woke liberals that would never actually put their lives on the line for the country, but somehow we're coddling them and caring more about feeding them emotional garbage than protecting the citizens of the United States. It's absolute insanity. You even saw, uh, this was just uh, a few months ago, the Air Force celebrates Pied Month with CEO of organization advocating for child things, right? This is... Uh, this is you see this all the time in the military. These kinds of things, and they go under the radar for the most part because the main, the lamestream media isn't going to talk about this because they know the the what kind of response they'll get from the everyday American people. In fact, here's some other examples. Back in 2016, the Navy Secretary Mabus uh, decreed that Navy sailors would no longer be known by traditional job titles such as corpsman adopting instead a new gender-neutral title such as medical technician. The resulting blowback was so severe from enlisted sailors who cherished those historic titles that the Navy was forced to reverse changes. Good. Push back. Don't give in to this garbage. Push back. Always push back. But wokeness has a way of coming back. It does. And last year, the Navy released a training video to help sailors understand the proper way of using personal pronouns, a skill Americans have traditionally mastered in grade school. The video instructs service members that they need to create a safe space for everybody. It's just insanity. Imagine joining the military, the str- uh, trying to enlist in the strongest military in the world, and you must be strong mentally, physically, emotionally, in every single way. And you get into the military whatever branch, and this is what they are telling you, that you must essentially weaken yourself to the same kind of standard that the left uses, where everything, everybody has to walk on eggshells. You can't say or um, hint at certain things. You can't say certain words. Otherwise, it'll trigger all the lefties around you. So we must create a safe space within the military. This is insanity. Listen, we can't give in to this insane wokeness in our military. Thankfully, uh, the American people voted historically to rebuke the radical left agenda. And we are getting people, you know, not perfect people. We're not, uh, you know, voting for pastors or elders of a church. But we are getting people, hopefully, that can come into our government and are saying that they're going to tackle this head on and instead make our military strong again. So Disney's Snow White star, Rachel Zegler, apologizes after backlash for attacking Trump voters. This wasn't just an attack. It was a a death wish, essentially. Uh, She has been just a massive walking controversy for Disney for a couple of years now. In fact, she's been such a controversy and she said so many horrible, woke, radical, lefty things that Disney had to delay the Snow White movie for a year, just weeks after backlash to lead actress bashing the original film. Now, this movie's been a disaster in more than just Rachel Zegler. But, uh, in fact, if you remember, they had all the... (laughs) All the seven dwarves were, like, these woke DEI hires. And they completely scrapped that and went back to these CGI. You know, the movie's probably going to be super awkward. It's going to do horrible. Like, you know, most of the Disney movies coming out today. Um, But they, they just refilmed some scenes and kept the overall movie, but just added in these CGI dwarves and it's pure insanity. But on top of that, Zegler has been just bashing 
the original story, and, and, you know, talking about all these woke things about how uh, the original story's love arc is just, you know, she, adding all this feminist stuff to it. So Disney delaying this movie is just them trying to delay the inevitable. This movie will do horrible because it's infested with the left ideologies, with the indoctrination, with all of the radical left agenda. In fact, if you remember this, here's just a taste of what Zegler would say about Snow White. I mean, you know, the, the original cartoon came out in 1937, and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus <laughs> on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Wow. Weird. Super weird. So we didn't do that this time. <laughs> so no, so no uh -huh. prince or a different kind of prince? We have a different approach to what I'm sure a lot of people will assume is a love story just because, like, we cast a guy in the movie, right. Andrew Burnap, great dude. Yeah. Um, it's uh, wow. <laughs> one of those this things that I think everyone's going to have their assumptions about what it's actually going to be, but uh, it's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. Oh, fantastic. Whether or not she finds love along the way is anybody's guess until 2024. Um, all of Andrew's scenes could 20, get cut. Who knows? 2025, actually. It got... Little did you know the movie got delayed because of you. This woman is a walking disaster, okay? Uh, she just nonstop spews all of the liberal, radical, feminist, DEI, all the things. If it's all the things, then she says it. And, um, you know, it, it's just a, it's been an absolute disaster for Disney. They're preparing to lose millions on this movie. Like they've lost, I mean, they've lost in the billions actually on their movies recently. On top of all of the woke feminist disaster that is Rachel Zegler on Disney and Snow White. She posted this after the election. This was from her official... Instagram. I find myself speechless in the midst of this. Another four years of hatred. Another four years of hate because it was so bad the first four years, right? Although not a single one of these lefties, Zegler included, could actually give you an example of something that happened on Trump's first term that was so horrible and filled with hate. Leading us toward a world I do not want to live in. Wow. That's kind of deep. Leaning us towards a world that will be hard to raise my daughter in. Leaning us toward a world that will force her to have a baby she doesn't want. Leaning us toward a world that is fearful. Then teach your daughter not to sleep around and connect herself to men in a way that she'll never be able to undo. In a way that she'll just feel used and abused over time more and more and more. Raise your daughter to be a woman with respect that honors God with her body. There, problem solved. I shouldn't be this shocked, but I am. I am heartbroken for my friends who awoke fear this morning. I am here with you to cry, to yell, to hug, to wax poetic on how the left continues to fail us in forging a new path forward. This loss should not have been, and it certainly should not have been by so many votes. It should have been, and it was, and it is. Because America rebuked your insane ideologies. They said enough is enough. We do not support you. We do not want you in charge, in, in, in positions of leadership anymore. That's why it was such a historic sweep. I echo Ethel Kane's statement more than anything. May Trump supporters and Trump voters and Trump himself never know peace. But this is the tolerant left. Okay. Never forget that. This is the tolerant, loving, accepting left. They are the only ones with the moral ability uh, to be loving, to be accepting, to do all the things that they scream and yell from the rooftops while wishing that somebody who disagrees with them never knows peace. Never knows love. Well, here is Zegler again, no doubt, forced by Disney to apologize. Listen to what she had to say. Hi, everyone. I would like to sincerely apologize for the election post I shared on my Instagram last week. I let my emotions get the best of me. Hatred and anger have caused us to move further and further away from peace and understanding. And I am so sorry I contributed to the negative discourse. This week has been emotional for so many of us, but I firmly believe that everyone has the right to their opinion. 
Yeah, you just wished that more than half the country would never know peace. You wished harm upon them. <laughs> These people never cease to amaze you in their hypocrisy. Even when it differs from my own, I am committed to contributing positively toward a better tomorrow. The left are bipolar. Do you do you see that yet? On one end, they'll be out screaming and crying and destroying and hurting physically, mentally, emotionally, everybody that doesn't hasn't sold their soul to the radical left machine. And then in like the next breath, they'll talk about how they don't want to contribute to negativity. They only want to contribute positively toward a better tomorrow. They don't want any hatred or anger and then turn around and scream that they hate you. And and they'll scream in absolute pure anger and hatred that they wish death upon you. Well, they're led by a demonic influence. Satan has them and he is leading them in absolute destruction and uh, why well, you know let's pray for their salvation of course but let's also pray that we don't give in to them and we've shown as america over the last couple weeks that we will not give in to the radical left praise the lord now we've all probably seen this controversy dealing with fema where an official ordered relief workers to skip houses with trump signs out in front of their, their home, their destroyed home, by the way. You know, if Kamala would have won <laughs> the election, then we would have seen this kind of thing on steroids times thousands and thousands. Um, we, we would have seen this type of just pure insanity. Can you believe this? In the middle of an, uh, one of the worst natural disasters that we've seen in decades and decades, government officials are ordering FEMA workers to skip homes because they have a Trump sign out in front of their destroyed house. In fact, the official where this bombshell revelation came out about, listen to what she had to say. The next morning they told me Verbally, I was fired, but they never provided me anything in writing stating that I was fired. They all alleged that these actions were made on my own recognizance and that it was for my own political advances. However, if you look at the record, there is what we call a community trend. And unfortunately, it just so happened that the political hostility that was encountered Um, by my team, and I was on two different teams during this deployment, Uh, they just so happened to have the Trump campaign signage. (laughs) FEMA always preaches avoidance first and then de-escalation. Wow. So this is not isolated. This is a colossal event of avoidance, not just in the state of Florida, but you will find avoidance in the Carolinas. Senior leadership will lie to you and tell you that they do not know but if you ask the DSA crew leads and specialists what they are experiencing in the field, they will tell you. Demand for FEMA to give you those incident reports. I mean, on one hand, you got to give it to the lady for just, yeah, this is what we did. It wasn't just me. It was actually top brass. It was officials in charge above me. This actually runs rampant in the government, believe it or not. But she's absolutely a fall. Uh, lady in all of this. They're using her. I'm not saying that to justify what she did. It's horrible. It's disgusting. And it absolutely, this kind of thing, uh, this should have criminal charges, by the way. Um, Of course it won't because the government, what, the government's going to criminally charge itself. But the top brass is absolutely using her as the fall person. Like they're saying that it was just her. When it was, you know, I absolutely believe her when she says that it wasn't just me. This is what everybody does in in, in the top brass. They they preach avoidance. They tell you to avoid people that have had their homes and their lives destroyed because they haven't sold their soul to the radical left. In fact, here she was on Fox News, another interview she gave. Now, the highlight here is is the Trump campaign signage, but if someone is in another, like an urban community and it's a different culture and someone feels uncomfortable, Mm. 
we can't go to that home. If you have loose dogs and someone on the team is comfortable with dogs and another person is not, we can't go to that home because of safety precautions. So you feared the Trump houses. The people on FEMA were fearing the Trump houses like they were fearing people with, with vicious dogs in their backyard. Exactly. And, this, <laughs> and, and that's, based on the, that's based on the trends. You can ask FEMA for incident reports. They yeah. have those because they ask us to report out if there's a, an incident at home. I mean, it's really no surprise because FEMA FEMA factors race, sex, sexual preferences into who should receive disaster relief first. They have a whole DEI system for helping people. If <laughs> if you're a straight white male and you've had your life destroyed, you go to the back of the line, buddy. You don't matter as much. You're not as human as the rest of us. So, um, you know, they, they are very well known for this. So, yeah, is it really beyond reality to believe that they put out an order to skip houses that have Trump signs? No, of course not. In fact, look at this. If you can read this, this was uh, implement best practices. No one goes anywhere alone. Okay, makes sense. Avoid homes advertising Trump. What? Practice de-escalation and preventative measures. Communicate and follow the rules, blah, blah, blah. All, all the things. You got to love how they just have avoid homes advertising Trump just slapped in the middle of all these rules for FEMA employees. Just, this is just insane. This is what we would have gotten for the last, uh, for, for, for another four years. Only it would have been times 10,000. Because Kamala would have come in and just done scorched earth, DEI, all over America. Thankfully, I think every state should be doing this that can. Florida sues FEMA for discrimination, denying aid to Trump supporters. Florida has sued the Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency, alleging discrimination in hurricane relief efforts against supporters of President-elect Donald Trump. The lawsuit filed by Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody accuses FEMA officials of deliberately denying aid to victims of Hurricane Helene and Milton based on their political affiliation, which has come out that's absolutely true. That, that has been proven. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has thrown his support behind the lawsuit, declaring that he has directed other state agencies to investigate and ensure accountability. I love this about DeSantis. Uh, you know, Florida's never shy about going head on, head first, and just hitting back at all these radical woke uh, agencies in our government. DeSantis described the incident as the blatant weaponization of government by partisan activists. Now think about this. Wasn't Kamala running on the fact that Trump was going to weaponize the government against his political enemies? And... That's literally what they've been doing for for years now. They've been weaponizing the government against Americans. And this is just one example, an incredibly insane example. But it's just one example of the government weaponizing their radical agenda against Americans. And thankfully, enough Americans woke up and rebuked the radical left agenda. Now we all know that Taylor Swift posted her childless cat lady endorsement of Kamala Harris before the election. And it did nothing to help Kamala Harris win the presidency. In fact, it probably hurt her more than anything. You know, you saw the entirety of Hollywood, at least everybody on the diddles list. You saw like all the corporations, all these celebrities come out and Taylor Swift, like one of the biggest names in the world. Uh, coming out, endorsing Kamala, and it it did nothing. It didn't help Kamala at all. You know, I said for months leading up to the election that Kamala is one of the most unpopular, unlikable politicians, and there's no chance she has the ability to actually win the election, uh, and that the only way she wins the election is... I mean, you know how. But thankfully, that didn't happen. God spared America. God showed his grace on America. Not that everything's going to be hunky-dory. We still need to hunker down and share the truth and not give in and continue to fight for our freedoms and for the truth and for the gospel. 
to be preached throughout all of society. And with Kamala as president, that would have been astronomically harder to do. But it wouldn't have defeated us. It just would have made it harder. And Christians need to wake up and realize uh, the grace that we have been shown by God. One massive thing that has the left losing their minds is not only did Taylor Swift's endorsement of Kamala completely backfire and just show that she's a tool of the machine. (laughs) Again, it did nothing. Uh, Now the left are losing their minds because Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, just surpassed Taylor Swift in X followers. Now, I know this seems trivial and actually doesn't matter whatsoever. I understand that. But the principled point here is that it doesn't matter if you have 94,734,000 blah, blah, blah followers just because you try to indoctrinate them into the radical left agenda doesn't mean it's going to work. Doesn't mean that you actually are going to be able to thwart the plans of God, who is sovereign, who is actually in control. Isaiah chapter 41. Listen to this. Verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is God talking to his people. This is God promising to protect his people. Even when the wicked rulers of the world try to destroy uh, the, the followers of God, They will not succeed. God is in control. God has the ultimate power. And he cannot be defeated. You know, unlike unbelievers who live in absolute fear and have no peace whatsoever, as a believer, you have the promise of God. The maker of the heavens and the earth has promised to be with you, to protect you, to comfort you to provide for you all things that you need. So no matter what comes against you, no matter who comes against you, God will uphold you with his righteous right hand. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comments section. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread truth. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.